I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. I have a really interesting one for you today. This is a uh, Viennese piano from 1880. These pianos are super cool and, <clears throat> and a really interesting um, kind of artifact of piano history. These, these pianos were super, super popular in, in, uh, in well, Central Europe in the, in the 19th century. They were invented by, uh, it, it, was the first, it was the first real action uh, competitor to the Cristofori action, which the Cristofori action, of course, goes back to 1700, but wasn't really, wasn't really, uh, um, didn't take off in Italy, took off more in, in, in Germany and then spread to uh, England and France. But uh, this was the first action type of action that was a real competitor to the Cristofori action. It's, it's significantly simplified. And, and it, uh, its manufacture really took off in, uh, in like the mid to late, well, I guess, I guess like um, eight, in 17, 1760s, 1770s, it was the, the, an organ and keyboard maker named, um, named Johann Stein in, in Vienna who manufactured these, who actually, by the way, met personally with Mozart a little bit later in the in the 1770s, and lots of other lots of other composers. Since since Vienna was was really the center of of Western music at the time, that uh, that other other composers were really heavily influenced using this instrument, including Beethoven when he was younger, uh, Mozart, Haydn. They they were all um, involved with this type of this type of very unique action. This particular piano was manufactured in Vienna in, in uh, 1880. So, you know, 100 years, a little bit over 100 years after it was invented. It was invented about 1769. So, so it was manufactured over 100 years later. And, and they were more or less ex extinct by 1900, 1920, something like that. No longer manufactured in favor of what is the... Uh, the modern piano action that uh, that was really more or less standardized by this time, but they were they were both being manufactured. This one was discontinued, and the modern action, of course, went out. I wonder. I don't know. If you know, maybe post it in the comments. I wonder how much how much the wars, like uh, World War One, had to do with that. I'm I'm not sure. That's something I I feel like I'd I'd really like to know, where where the uh, of course. Um, Austro-Hungarian Empire, where this came from, would have been, um, of course, the the defeated in World War One, and then more of the American um, and and French and uh, English side, where pianos were manufactured very differently, were of course the victors. So I, I don't know. I wonder how much that had to do with. The modern piano's victory. It is a superior action for sure. There's no question. It's it's a better repetition. It's it's more dynamic range. Um, it's it's more precise. It's easier to regulate. All of those things. So so maybe that's the maybe that's the reason that it won out. Um, okay. So this particular piano, you know, it would actually be cool. Let's let's look at the action because it is so unique compared to. Compared to the modern piano, and by modern piano I mean, I mean post, the, the post 1880. But yeah, it's just it's just kind of cool. It's interesting to, to look at it. This particular piano, we did not do a restoration on it. We did what I would characterize as a full refurbish, very very thorough, I might add. So this piano, it, it, it really wasn't even functional. It wasn't holding pitch. It had, it was of course very dirty on the inside, which which you is is pretty typical. Um, keys weren't working, all sorts of issues, and now uh, now all of that is everything's working and it actually sounds pretty good. It sounds like a Viennese Viennese action piano.
has a really nice base. There are about 100 manufacturers by, by 1800, all in, all in Austria, Vienna, and southern Germany is where, where all these pianos were made. There was, a, there was a counterpart in England, but it was just a very different piano altogether. tone. It's a really pretty piano. I think they're going to be super pleased. By the way, check, check this out. It's straight strung, which is also a really unique feature. Well, I shouldn't say unique because there were other pianos as well that were straight strung, but, uh, but very different, let's say that, very different from the modern piano. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, all of these strings are straight as opposed to, let's find, well, this is an upright piano. That, that piano there is taken apart. That's a grand piano. But you can see the, it's the same kind of thing where you've got, where you've got the, the uh, treble bridge here and then going across the treble bridge on a higher plane. You've, you've got the, the bass bridge. Same thing here with the treble bridge there. Just rebuilt that, that's beautiful work. That's really nice. Got the treble bridge here, and then on a higher plane here by, I don't know, an inch or so, you've got the, the uh, bass bridge where the strings go across. So the strings cross each other. And it's straight strung. And let's uh, check out the action. So this action is... very um, different. One thing you've got here is you have hammers that rather than, rather than coming up th this direction away from the pianist, they're facing this direction. As you can see, they're, they're towards the pianist. And you have, uh, it's, a, it's a simplified system. You've got the fulcrum right here. This, this part here is what pushes up on the on the dampers, and you've got your escapement back here with this little, um, these components back here, little saddle where the hammer pivots, and and then you've got the what's essentially the back check right here. as opposed to the back check being on the back of the key. Okay, so, so what we've done on this, we've like cleaned up the ivories. Obviously, we've, we've soda blasted everything to just make it clean, put on new bushings. You can see the new bushings on all these keys, new bushings under here, so all of that is firm. The ivory, of course, is chipped and yellowed and, and cracked all over the place, but, uh, but we did our best to sand that down. It sands really nicely and then buffed it up, make it look nice. And then just a, a huge amount of work in, in, in uh, like putting new leather on, on, the, um, on the hammers and regulating everything so that it functions. There's not actually a let off um, or, or sorry, there is let off, there's escapement. There's not after touch. You don't feel a, a bump on this type of action like you do on, a, on the modern piano. So, and then of course damper, damper work and cleaning and, um, and there was a, a lot of um, research that went into 
figuring out how to do this piano correctly. And check out, check out there's a decal in there from the, uh, let's go to the other, why don't you go to the other side with the camera and then I'll open this up a little bit further. You can see the decal down there on the soundboard of the, uh, um, I think that that's the original dealer of this piano. You can see it's from Vienna. Kind of cool. And check out this, check out that, uh, that damper system. feel so inadequate when playing these these pianos like uh, you know I've, I've my training is, is in jazz and and I just don't feel like it's right to play play something that's kind of kind of more modern 20th century American jazz than than play like something more more Viennese I wish wish I could and, and I'm making this video kind of late at night there's nobody here that could play it for me anyway Super cool piano. Really happy with this. How this turned out. I think I think the the owners of this piano are going to be are going to be blown away by it. Um, it's gonna. Uh, they've they've never seen this piano in, in this in this anywhere near this condition. They're going to be really happy. Thanks for watching.